and ideas are bonded. Hello my fellow YouTubers and thanks for staying with me at Blue Star Industrial Arts. Yeah, it's been a while since I put up any content. And there is a reason for that. And the reason for that is pretty apparent as you're looking at it right now. This is kind of um, a bird's eye view of probably half of my shop. The important half, anyway. What's conspicuously missing? Right. There is no more woodworking equipment. Uh, back where the welder is over there, that's where my lathe was. Um, I had a couple of other machines here. I had a bandsaw. I had a joiner. Um, when I was doing segmented work, uh, mostly I was doing wood turning. And I was doing some metal work too, but as my channel shows, but metal has won out. So we're into a new phase here in the hobby. And metal has won out for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, first and foremost is I just enjoy working with metal so much more. It's more challenging. And believe it or not, it makes less, less of a mess. Um, and there's, there's a couple of other secondary reasons I'll get to. But um, I'll give you the tour of the new retooled shop. And um, you'll see what I will be up to. I've uh, actually sold, as well as the woodworking equipment, I sold my coal-fired forge to a fellow who was interested in getting into blacksmithing. And the reason why I did that is because this is so much more convenient. This is a propane forge. I could run it right in the shop. I don't have to go outside. I don't have to worry about if it's raining and it doesn't just blow a whole shitload of coal dust all over the place. And also, the, the things that I'm making, custom knives and uh, smaller blacksmith projects, I have no need for that big coal forge. Uh, I'm not doing real big work here, panels or anything like that. Um, that's why I keep my blacksmith stuff on the smaller scale and uh, that was my first edition. Also added is a new anvil. The old anvil I had was a um, I think it was it was cast steel uh, with a hardened plate welded to the top of it. It was okay. It was only 50 pounds and it was small and it was kind of um, study, meaning it absorbed a lot of the energy. This new one is a Pendenhauser, rigid supplies them, and these guys go anywhere from this small 80 pound one all the way up to, uh, I think you can get these at 240 pounds. They're expensive. Okay, this little guy was 600 bucks, but um, it's got a one inch hardy. Um, and uh, a three-quarter inch Pritchard. And as you can see, there's great rebound here. And it's got a nice ring to it. So that's my new anvil. And I'll probably get a bigger one um, if I step up size of my projects. But right now, that is plenty big enough for what I'm doing. I uh, sold the Grizzly 6 by or 72 by 72 belt grinder. That's a six foot belt, two inches wide. Um, and they said if you could learn to grind a knife on a Grizzly, you could learn you could grind a knife on anything. And um, I did. And uh, the Grizzly was okay. And if I had the room, I would have kept it for a uh, just a uh, profiling machine. Um, my problem with the Grizzly is limited tooling and it has two speeds, fast and faster. And that belt is running at you at 600 surface feet per minute. This one is a new um, Reader Products 
manufactured by a father and son shop in Texas. I've researched these things. I was ready to pull the trigger on a, a, a KMG. Um, this had much more versatility. Um, one of the things this can do is come to the horizontal once I route my hole in my table so the motor could get under there. But you could do horizontal grinding. So it's a horizontal machine as well as a vertical machine. There's multiple uh, tooling options for these two tooling arms. Platen, you can do a, um, um, a, a contact wheel anywhere from small contact wheel to 10 inch contact wheel if you want to grind uh, hollow ground stuff. It's just a great versatile machine and the best part is it is variable speed. So when you're doing your fine finishing work, you don't have to worry about that 600 surface feet per minute. Which is a problem I had with the Grizzly. And it's led to just so much more uh, hand sanding that you had to do because you make one little error, or one little jolt when that belt is running that fast, and you're done. You ruin the whole project. So this guy will give me that speed. It's going to go all the way down to as slow as I need it. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. So that will really step up my game in blade making. Um, the motor is one and a half horsepower. The machine is from Reader. Um, they will sell either the machine or the machine and the motor in combo. You do have to wire these uh, motors when you get them. Uh, that's a Leeson, and that's all enclosed motor um, and an enclosed uh, KB24 variable speed controller. So it's a great setup. So, as the old gear lamp says, new ideas come out all the time. So now I'm going to get into the secondary reason why I stopped working with wood. Um, we hobbyists, we can only make so much stuff and give it away to our friends and our family. Um, and one of the things that I like to do when I got into um, being busy all the time is making stuff, going to trade shows, not trade shows, craft markets and renting a table for 15 bucks or $25, um, selling some stuff. Not to make money, mind you, to keep the hobby funded. To buy more materials and or more tooling and so forth. Now this, this steampunk lamp that you're looking at. I love steampunk and I make a lot of lamps with Black Aryan. I have amusement park uh, ride gears and I put them together and um, I sell these things for three four hundred dollars. Um, I made a pair of lamps, uh, a two bulb lamp um, a woman, I had sold one at a, at a show and I was just holding it for the person who bought it so they wouldn't have to carry it around. And the woman asked me, you know, can I make more? Can I get more? And I said, yeah, I could make this exact same lamp for you. She said, I need two for my husband's new um, uh, studio. He was some sort of draftsman or something and she thought it would go perfect. It wasn't like this one. Um, it was the other black car in one that I have on my website. And she bought the pair for $400 and was happy as clam. And her husband was pleased with it. Um, when I was trying to sell my wood projects, I'll just give you a little bit of an idea here. Right? You have a nice turquoise barrel box with a turquoise inlay on the lid. Right? Black walnut. Nicely finished. This is a box I've, I think I have a video of making this box out of red paddock and um, some other kind. I think this was uh, Indian rosewood. Okay, it's a nice little box. Something like a 
cosmic colored bowl or dish or, or whatever, what have you, okay? And even something as intricate as this tumbling bowl. There's three woods in here. This is uh, maple, cherry, and black walnut. Now, what I'm getting at is there's over $120 worth of material in this project. Not to mention numerous amount of hours because these are all individual staves. If you watch the video on how it's made, you'll see the work that's involved in this. Okay? And what I'm getting to is you can't give this stuff away. Well, you could give it away or I could put it on a table for 10 or $15 and somebody might buy it. But I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me. Something like this is a lot of work and when you get into the segmented turning, it's even more work. I just got a feeling that wood is not the thing anymore. Now in contrast, I told you about the steampunk art. Things like these tavern puzzles. Okay, you got to remove this part from this part and it's a whole bunch of moves you have to make to do it. I can sell these for $15 all day long. People like them. There's all different types, different designs, and I have them hanging up and, you know, somebody will come around and someone's playing with it and they want to figure out how it works. And so, and they're easy to make. Other things, simple things. Angel wing keychains. Um, mermaid's tails, things of that nature. These things, I, I make them out of spoons that I buy at yard sales and garage sales and whatnot. Okay? I put these on the table for $5 and they just, they disappear. People just come and pick them up. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Boom. And they're gone. Um, other kind of keychain things like these forged leaves. These I sell for about eight, eight to ten dollars, depending on where I am. And I'll come to a show with thirty of these things, and most of them, if not all of them, will be gone by the day's end. And this is what I'm getting at. You can, I can buy a truckload, a pickup truckload of this uh, mild steel from a place like Fazio's or something for two hundred dollars, and I can make a plethora of small projects with it that all sell for that 10, 15, 20, 25 dollar price range. I could pick up black iron pipe from the job site and make candle holders in the forge and with my fuller tool on the anvil. And people buy this stuff, whether for home decor or just to have an unusual item like this hanging around. Uh, so you never know what you could get into, but I would rather do something like that where at least I'm paying for my materials. I don't even care about my time because I enjoy doing it. It's just that, you know, rather than go into the household funds to keep the hobby going and just build up a surplus of stuff that you're making. Um, no. And that's my shtick. So I like doing that, and that's why I got away from wood, is because the wood stuff, I don't know, maybe back in the 90s, wood was popular or whatever. People don't seem to like wood these days. Um, but you get some kind of metal tchotchke, and they buy it. So, that's why we have retooled here. And we're going to be doing a lot of interesting projects like this. And for all my wood uh, turning friends and so forth, uh, uh, I hate to see you go. But uh, it's just a matter of, you know, I don't have uh, unlimited resources here. I could, uh, you know, just do what I could do, both in time and in, and, and in finances. So it makes sense to me to... Do the stuff I enjoy the most and the stuff that I can go to shows and sell because I like traveling 
to shows. I like knowing where these craft shows are, particularly in the in the late summer and early fall. I really groove on it because I get to walk around and see what other makers are making. Give me some ideas. So that's the story of the retooling. And um, hope to see you soon. Bye.